Jars. Hugh 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 Jars. I love you, Hugh. Hey everybody, where's Wally here? Look, I'm unable to come to the YouTubes at the moment. I've got a pressing engagement. Yes, I know the wheelie bins don't go up till tomorrow, but this is more important than Flat Earth. Anyway, I've got my mate Hugh, and he's going to fill in for me. Take it away, Hugh. Thanks, Wally. All the best for your previous engagement, and I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, you helped me out with that video the other week, and I appreciate the opportunity to return the favour. So this morning, Wall and I were having a bit of a chat on the old uh, texting, and uh, we're looking over some videos that he did about a year ago about the ISS and some beautiful shots, as you can see here. And uh, we sort of looked at uh, the orbit of the, the ISS into the future, and it seems that there's so many times a year that the ISS, uh, for a few days at least, is 24 hours in sunlight, simply because of the tilt of the Earth and the orbit that it has. And that means if it's in 24 hours sunlight, you can see it at midnight if you wanted to. I feel it might be helpful here just to explain why we see satellites at nighttime at all. Uh, it's simply because they are much higher up than we are. So we're on the night side of the Earth and it's dark, but they're 200 to 400 kilometers above us. In the same way, if you're on the top of the mountain, you'll see the sunset for longer than someone at the bottom of the mountain, simply because of the curvature of the Earth. However, you can only see satellites for about two hours after sunset and two hours before sunrise because of the shadow of the Earth. The satellite will be bright, it'll move into the shadow, and then it'll become dark because the sun is no longer illuminating it. Sometimes, the further away from sunset you are, you'll see a satellite move across the sky and suddenly blink out. And that's the point where it moves into the shadow. Now, that'll become relevant a little bit later in the video, but for now, let's have a look at when you can see the ISS in the middle of the night in the Northern Hemisphere. Of course, it depends on where you are. And uh, as we move into winter here in the Southern Hemisphere, the Northern Hemisphere is in summer. And the longer days of summer increases your chances of seeing it. Now, of course, in six months time, the situation will be reversed. And also, the closer to the poles that you are, the more likely you are to see a satellite throughout the night. So we had a look at the charts. And for those watching sometime in the future, this is being recorded in mid-May 2020, so I'm going to show you dates for around then, um, but if you're in the future, they don't apply. It'll be some, it could well be something completely different. Let's look at uh, Heavens Above to get their ISS uh, predictions for roughly London. Uh, that should give a good idea for um, Europe, the rest of Europe as well. Uh, you can just go to the same website, heavensabove.com. Uh, there's a hyphen between heavens and above. Uh, and you can look up for your particular location. And indeed, we see that you can see the ISS at midnight. And in fact, at early in the morning and late into the evening. So let's have a look at the world daylight map on the Mercator projection. This is from timeanddate.com, and I've set it to for the second line in the uh, graph I showed you earlier. Uh, it's a pass that goes over London, basically directly overhead at about 2 o'clock in the morning, well, 2 o'clock in the morning UTC, which is 3 o'clock in the morning British summertime. Uh, and this will happen on the 14th. As you can see, most of Antarctica is in darkness, indicating winter in the Southern Hemisphere, and most of the Arctic is in sunlight, indicating summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Also see that London is right on the edge of the darkest area of the night time which means its position is right on the edge of the Earth's shadow uh, for the ISS anyway, which is 200 to 400 kilometres up. Uh, further away from the North Pole, this wouldn't happen at all. You wouldn't get to see the ISS in the middle of the night. But because it's right on the edge, you do get to see it because it's high up enough for it to happen. Before we move on, let's look at the equivalent situation in North America for all, all our viewers there. For the purposes of this table, I've chosen a location roughly in the middle uh, to give the best chance of indicating when there might be a, a good pass for anyone else in the general region. And of course, once again, we see that there are several passes in the middle of the night. And if we move to the uh, daylight map, I've chosen this to for the pass on the 15th in the middle of the night. Uh, so this corresponds to that. And as you can see, the middle of North America is roughly the same place London was on the other one. 
uh, indicating that it's this is likely to happen. But there's more. So it got me to thinking. If the ISS at this time of year, at those latitudes, is very close to the edge of the Earth's shadow, is it possible that it could just nick the shadow? So you would see it coming up uh, over the horizon, and then it'd blink out as it moved into the shadow, and then reappear again as it came out of the shadow. Wally thought this was cool too, so he looked up some charts. So this image is from satflare.com. It's the parameters have been set for an observer in the middle of North America. This is for the past early Friday morning UTC time, which is just before midnight Thursday night uh, local time, if my calculations are correct. On the left, you see all of North America, and you can see where day and night is. You see it's on the edge of the, the night there, um, and you can see the, the many paths of the ISS. Uh, on the right, you see a close-up for the location we picked and you can see that it's a bright red line, then it's a dark one, and then it's a red line again within the viewing area, which is the circle. And that means the ISS will rise for about 10 degrees or so, then blink out, and then you'll have to turn around 180 degrees, and then about 10 degrees off the horizon on the other side, you'll see it come on again and then uh, set below the horizon. Pretty cool, isn't it? Cool! 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 So if you're living in the high latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere and you're interested in getting out there and making this observation of the ISS blinking out and then blank, blinking back on again, let us know. My email is above. Send me an email and we, if you can film it, we'd love to see the results. Finish off, I'm going to do two things. This is a picture of the ISS I took as I flew over my house. Uh, this was taken with an iPhone, would you believe it or not? I've zoomed right in, of course, and you can actually see some detail there proving that it's actually an object, it's not just a light. And we'll go out with the rest of that ISS sunrise video. See you next time.